signs of the times. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their own idea about, you know, the biblical, scriptural, factual reality about what the signs of the times are. You know, scoffers and, you know, people not believing that it's the end of the world or, you know, people not wanting to get saved, all those kinds of things. Kind of the normal routines that you hear whenever there's some Bible conference or, you know, there's some kind of like, oh, I don't know, teaching on the rapture. You know how everybody gets a little excited for a little while. Ooh, ah, Jesus is coming. Yeah, Ray. We're all going home. Woohoo, people get ready. But one of the signs of the times, especially in video that I want to talk about, is and that I've always mentioned to people that I feel very adamant about is a gut check kind of reality. And that's, do you believe it? You see, people say, of course, I believe. And then they'll tell you what they believe. And you say, well, you know, that's good. Now, do you believe it? And, you know, people will say, well, yeah, I just told you I believe it. And they'll tell you what they believe. Well, i got to ask you, do you believe it? You see, I'm not one of those people that listens to what you say. I'm looking at what you do. Are you planning on retiring? Guess what? Ain't going to happen. Are you planning on that, you know, 10-year, 5-year, 20-year plan? Ain't going to happen. You see, that's the part that I want to know. I had a discussion recently with my wife kind of floored me because she has a funny way of answering my questions and sometimes she doesn't know what my point is and sometimes she answers one way and you know kind of was more like hadn't really done her homework or study. I was a little bit taken back by it. I said, honey, what do you think? And it just came out of clear blue, you know, because I always do that out of clear blue. I said, do you think that uh, Jesus is coming in your lifetime? She said, I don't know. But, you know, as a typical safe answer, like, well, you know, pass it off. So I asked her, I said, you are kidding, right? She said, well, I don't know. I said, let me ask you this. You read all those Left Behind series books, right? Yeah. You know, you've been around me for a long time talking about, you know, Jesus coming in all these things and you've seen some of the videos that I've done and some of the teachings she said yeah I said so what do you think do you think Jesus is coming in your life well maybe and I looked at her straight in the eye and I said you got to be kidding me I said you don't know that he's coming in this generation and she said well no I don't so I went through what she hates I went to a lecture. <laughs> she calls it a lecture. Where I listed all the things that have happened, you know, chronologically, that make us know that we are in the last generation. The first and mo foremost, most important one being the birth of Israel. The second, likewise, starting the clock ticking down, because, you know, you can kind of put a clock there at the birth of Israel, but when Jerusalem became the undivided capital of Israel, suddenly the time clock, the stopwatch started going. And so I told her about all the different prophecies about it and how 120 years to the day from when Israel was first declared a nation by Jews the rehearsal back in you know, World Zionist Congress 120 years, which is the number of a man's days that he's supposed to be on the earth, 120 years later one generation, so to speak suddenly Jerusalem was the capital of Jerusalem. Wow what a coincidence or was it? So it was interesting. I said, this generation will not pass away until they see all things fulfilled. I said, now I do believe that those people who lived before the birth of Israel, before Jerusalem became the capital, 
maybe they need to pass away. Kind of like what the children of Israel did when they were wandering in the wilderness. That generation needed to pass away before entering into the land. And the same thing is true about us. There are people alive today that I can tell you, as long as they're alive, we probably aren't going home. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's a perfect fulfillment of the scriptures of the children entering into the promise, children of Israel entering into the promised land. Those who had doubted had to be removed from those who were faithful and true to go into the promised land. And so, even Moses, because of his sin, didn't enter in. Kind of like the you know parable of ten virgins. You know, ooh, got to be careful. So, I explained to her this, that, and the other thing. You know, I went through all the scriptures, talked about the prophecies. And I said, now, knowing that, how should you live? I said, I have, ever since we've been married, and we've been married, oh, I don't know, about five, ten years. Maybe, no, about ten years. Well, I don't know, it's somewhere between five and ten years. <laughs> I don't know. I said, okay, so, knowing these things, and knowing that you have children, shouldn't you be telling them about it? Wouldn't that give you more impetus? I mean, no offense, I mean, I see your grandchildren being born, but do you think you're going to see your grandchildren grow up? That got to her. She didn't cry, but she thought about it. And I said, now, let me tell you something about my sister. Now, my sister is someone that I witnessed to. Oh, I tried to witness to her anyways, and I was a Jesus freak, so, you know, first thing that came out of my mouth was, today, if you hear his voice, hard not to say provocation, because, you know, if you don't get saved today, you could wind up dead, you know, and it could be a born again Christian, born again Catholic, born again this, born again that, whatever, but you got to be born again, because if not, you're going to go to hell today, you know. So I, you know, it's all pretty boom, 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 scripture, 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 beat her to death. And of course, she didn't get saved. But my mother and I used to have long discussions, and gradually, after my mother got saved, my sisters got saved. <laughs> so if I had something to do with it, praise the Lord. If I didn't, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> but anyways, my sister, the one I'm talking about, Mary Lynn, always followed whatever my mother was doing. And I used to make sure that my mother was grounded and you know, got her involved with calories. And she went through all the different tape series with Firefighters for Christ and all kinds of things. You know, got involved in different churches. You know, I'd always make sure she was doing okay. You know, and in the end of her life, you know, she was like a dynamic woman of God. You know, pretty much still carnal in some ways, but you know, so aren't we all? But she knew the Lord, and so and she was pretty powerful in it. So she influenced my sisters in a lot of ways. But their faith was usually dependent upon what mom said. So once mom was gone, they learned to grow in their own way. And they used to listen to a tape as they were going to work, you know, in their cassette players. And so they grew in faith because you can't listen to a Chuck Smith series tape, you know, especially Holy Spirit series or going through the Bible without growing and learning. And so my sister was always terrified, so she made sure she listened to a tape every day. <laughs> or at least when she was going to work. So, knowing that, I said, you know, my sister's coming up. I need to ask her. I said, I'm very clear on this. You know, I said, it's, you know, before when we had so much time, I said, I always knew that, you know, the Lord wasn't returning before 2012. You know, there's no way. It's impossible. It ain't going to happen in 2012. I've always known that. But I said, now that we're getting closer afterwards, I said, not much time left. I said, if you're lucky, you'll have five years, maybe. So most people are pretty confident about this 20, you know, 15, 2017 window, you know, of opportunity. 2017 to 22, 2022 being really, really uh oh time. And I've known that all my life. And kind of like, you know, never really put it on the 2017, 22, but, you know, pretty close to in there. You know, somewhere around there, I'm not going to say. But my point being is that I knew it wasn't 2012, and I knew that from that moment on in 2012, you better be doing and getting ready, because guess what? It's going to happen. And so I kind of wanted to talk to my sister and see where she was at. I, I was shocked by my wife. I knew the videos that I'd done and produced and made, you know, and I knew that it was out there, and different people were, you know, either wackos or right on or kind of like, you know, at least thinking about Jesus coming. So then I began to realize that my wife was just wanting to avoid it. Like she does a lot of things, because it's not that she minds knowing. 
She just doesn't want to deal with it. She wants to avoid it. She has a tendency of wanting to avoid conflict. You know, kind of like what most people do. They want to avoid, you know, step around, walk around the block, you know, not walk past or deal with it face to face. Well, me, you know, I'm kind of a different kind of guy, you know. I remember where I was living one time, you know, I, I saw a conflict going on, you know, downstairs. And some guy was beating his wife, you know, and so I walked downstairs and I walked over and I stood in between them. Now, obviously the guy could have took a swung, swing at me and probably would have. But you know, I just stood there. I didn't say anything. I didn't argue with him. You know, I didn't yell at him. I didn't bundle up my fists and act like Macho Man, because obviously I'm not Macho Man. But I stood there and I looked at him and that's all. And you know, he didn't beat her anymore. He quit hitting her, but he did chew my face out. You know, he was wanting me to provoke him in some way to do something so that I would be the recipient of his anger and wrath and everything else. But you know, the reason I went down there is because I had said something right before I did. I said, you know, Lord, I'm not going to stand here and watch some woman get beat. I'm walking down there. So you need to help me in this one. Because obviously this guy is like way over the top. So he jumped in my face and, you know, for about 20 minutes, Little did I know my wife was watching from the window, but for about 20 minutes, this guy was screaming at me and, you know, yelling and flinching his muscles and flexing his pecs and doing all kinds of things, you know, that just wanted a reaction out of me. And I was bored. <laughs> I'd been a property manager. I'd been in security. I'd been through all these different things in life, you know. It was kind of like, you got to be kidding me. Some punk kid, you know, who's just still learning his manhood and, you know, trying to be something macho, you know, beating up on some poor woman, you know, who's supposed to be his wife and his kids are watching, you know, is going to take a swing at me and I'm going to let him and I'm going to let him go ahead and hit me and then he's going to go to jail and he's going to wind up in wherever. You know, and I'm standing there going, you know, the guy probably pull a knife, you know, probably try to stab me or something, you know, and I'm just thinking, this is boring, you know, I mean, this is ridiculous, but at least the woman's not getting hit. So I'm kind of thinking about all that while the guy is just going off. You know, that's all that happened. He finally, you know, calmed down. He vented out his anger and finally got over it. And I kind of laughed because I thought, now, I don't avoid those kind of things because I've been trained. I kind of know what's going to happen. I was well aware of the potential danger. I had said a prayer. God had kind of confirmed it to me that maybe I should step in. And so I did, you know. And obviously, if he'd said no, I wouldn't have. I might have called the cops. <laughs> Wouldn't have done much in those houses because unfortunately they didn't do much there too often. But the point is, is that I'm not an avoidance person, you know. There are some people that avoid confrontation. They avoid the circumstances. This woman was really getting hurt, so if I had avoided it, I have no idea what would have happened, you know, in the long run. The same thing is true like with the end of the world. A lot of people like to avoid that subject. They say, well, you know, nobody really knows. You know, nobody understands. You know, nobody's got a handle on it. You know, we just think we know. And you know, they like to avoid finding out because they're into avoidance. They don't want to know. And that's the difference between maybe you and I. Not only do I want to know, I want to prepare. I want to get ready. I want to know what are the signs of the times to look for so I know A, how much time I got left, B, what I could get away with, so to speak, and C, what I probably better be telling other people to do just in case is true. Because you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a fact. And the reality is, is that you can know the facts for yourself. You can do all the research if you quit avoiding the subject. And that's part of what the signs of the times are. You see, there's a spiritual thing going on and it's called avoidance you know as long as we can flip the television on ah, don't need to think about it you know hey we got next season you know besides the football season just started we need to pay attention to that we don't need to worry about what's going on in the world you know forget that you know after all they're always doing that you know fighting somewhere or kind of getting earthquakes somewhere and yeah maybe it is getting a little hotter this year but who cares you know it's just it's just like one of those things, you know, it's a cycle. It's going to keep going over and over and over again. And you know, you're right. It is a cycle. It is going to happen 
as the circle gets smaller and smaller until the actual day it happens. And you know what we're talking about. The end of the world. The end of the world as you know it. Now for me, it's the beginning of my world. Because as a born again Christian, of course, we believe in the rapture and we believe that it will be snatched away. Some people, I don't believe everyone will. Some people as the church you know, will be left behind and they're going to be shocked at that day. But then they'll get their act together and maybe they'll die for Jesus. But at least they'll have done what God wanted them to do in the first place. Because they didn't get ready. They weren't prepared, so they didn't go home. They had to still do the work God sent them to do. That's the point. Society and the world goes on and on avoiding the reality of the situation we have come to a conclusion of. When you sit down brass tacks on a table and you start drawing up all the ramifications of what the world is doing to itself, you know it can't go on. And I don't mean pollution, and I don't mean you know global warming. I'm talking about God. You know as well as I do that you know God, and you know He exists. And you know things are getting worse and not better. You know those are facts. What you do with those facts determines whether you want to prove it to yourself or you want to avoid it. And that's part of the signs of the times. There is a force, you could say, in the world. A influence, as it were that wants you to avoid the subject at all costs. It's kind of evil that way. You know, wants you to just go on, you know, eat, drink, be merry. You know, never mind, you know, it's always been and always will be. You know, people are marrying and divorcing, there's wars and there's fights, and there's this, that, and the other thing. So, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. After all, you know, we've always heard about this Jesus is coming for how many years now? Two centuries? Huh. Ain't gonna happen, is it? Of course, for two centuries we always heard that Israel would become a nation that wasn't a nation. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And we always heard that as soon as Israel became a nation, that would be the generation. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Now those are two facts that you can't avoid. Now, when you forget it, of course, that's like sticking your head in the sand. It's like saying, you know, I know I heard a train crossing. I know I heard the signal. And I know I saw the arm go down. But you know, I think I can make it. So you go ahead and try to go through. You won't make it. You won't make it. Avoiding the subject of the fact that Israel became a nation isn't going to make it go away. Avoiding the fact that Jerusalem became the capital of Israel in 1967 doesn't make it go away. As a matter of fact, knowing how long it's been since those things happened makes it ever closer that you can even hear the train tracks rumbling. Because people get ready. Jesus is coming. And you know darn well the facts of the world, the way they look, more than a few times has kind of scared the reality check into you until you flip the channel and changed the direction of your attention to something else. Remember, that's a sign of the time, and that's what we're talking about. Now, who I'm talking to isn't the non-Christian, believe it or not. I'm talking to the Christian. Because, you see, the Christian wants to avoid the subject of being ready today. The Christian doesn't want to admit that Jesus is coming soon. The Christian wants to act like they can occupy and enjoy the world and what they got from the world while they're living here to eat their cake and, you know, drink the Kool-Aid too. But the reality check is coming. Are they preparing for Jesus coming again? Are they living as though they were the last generation? Are you? When my sister arrived, finally, after, oh, I don't know, you know, she'd been talking about coming and we never see each other except for once in a blue moon. We visited for a little bit, you know, and she talked about the tape lending library that she does, you know, and she's, you know, in the ministry, you know, and she does some little things, you know, that are really cool, you know. And so we shared and talked, you know, and, and it was good, you know, and they had brought my nephew, you know, um, 
Yeah, my nephew. Actually, I think it's my... I don't even know what they are. <laughs> Let's see, my sister's son's son. So, whatever that is. I don't keep track. <laughs> They're all related. You know, everybody's related somehow. You know, But anyways... They brought him along too, you know, and so he, you know, did some talking. I was talking to him for a few minutes, you know. And my my brother-in-law and I would stop talking so that we could listen to him and pay attention to him, and you know, we would, and then we'd go back to our conversation. And, you know, we gave him more respect than what most people do, you know, for a child of that age and for, you know, the things that he was talking about. But I can carry on six conversations at once, so I don't have a problem with that, you know, pick up right back up where I left off. So finally it came to a point, you know, where we were, you know, sharing about different things about video and ministry and I asked Chick, I said, you know, Chick, I said, I really want to talk to you because my wife had stepped out to smoke a cigarette, you know, and I said, I was talking to Lori, you know, and Lori's my wife, and I said, I was talking to Lori the other day and I said, I need to ask you this and I want to, ask, you know, I want you to tell me straight up, you know. I said, do you believe, and I said, I asked her the same question, so I'm going to ask you, you know, I said, and I'm, you know, wanted to ask everyone in the family, you know, and I said, do you believe that Jesus is coming in this generation? She said, of course. And I said, do you expect to see your grandchildren grow up? And she said, no. And I said, do you prepare yourself for the fact that you aren't going to see, you know, do you think he's going to come in the next 20 years? Yes. I said, do you think in the next 10 years? Yes. I said, do you think we've got five years left? She says, I doubt it. And I said, thank you. <laughs> I was about to shut up and you know, could have gone... I could have dropped dead happy that moment. Because, you see, not only did my sister talk about she believed it, she talked about she knew it, and that she had planned her life accordingly. She was working with all of my family members that are in the city that she lives in, also worried, and she worries, so, you know, it's kind of a prayer thing, kind of a worry thing, kind of an anxiety thing, but also kind of a works to do the things that God had told her to do thing. That she was so concerned about them that yes she does do and care about them knowing that they could be left behind and that there's nothing she can do about it unless they change their minds and so she's done all she can with them and so she prays for them and tries to encourage them and at different times talks to them as God leads her and that's the point that I'm trying to get to she didn't avoid it I directly asked her and she directly responded that's the person I know believes that Jesus is coming because you see, I know that right now there are lots of people in my home, so to speak, church that I came from, Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa. You know, I know there are lots of people that used to run around declaring that Jesus is coming again, Jesus is coming again, Jesus is coming again. And now they say it, but they don't believe it. They say it, but they don't live it. They don't act like this is the generation that's going to see Jesus return. They say, it could happen. Maybe it'll happen. You know, the signs are all coming together and it's possible. Get ready because it's possible. You always got to be ready, so get ready. See, they compromise with avoidance by using a theological terminology to avoid the fact that they are living as though he will never return. And they probably won't go in the rapture. And I'm talking about a very dynamic, very powerful movement of God that may have fallen away from the first love because they're more involved in the ministry of Jesus than the reality of Jesus coming again. So what do we do? What do you do? Do you avoid it? You know, and just say, well, I'm going to pick and choose my church. You know, I'm going to pick and choose my theology. I'm going to pick which parts of the Bible I want. I'm going to listen to this and listen to that. Kind of make my decision based upon that. You know, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to participate with what makes me feel comfortable. With what you know, I get a little bit of Bible study from here, so I'm going to go to, you know, like maybe a Calvary Chapel, you know, and study the Word, you know. But then I'm going to kind of like, you know, get comfortable too, you know. I'm going to go on my cruise ships, you know. I'm going to go do my thing, you know. I'm going to go make sure that I have my time, even though maybe my neighbor, my friend, or even some of the people in my own Calvary Chapel, or my own church, or whatever congregation or assembly that you're a part of, even though some of them I know don't believe, never mind about them. I'm going to take care of me first. Really? You are. After all, I mean, isn't this the parable of ten virgins? You know, i got to keep my oil. People get ready. Jesus is coming. Soon. But will we be going home? 
I don't think so. You see, I know, based upon my experience in lots of Calvary chapels, I know the ones that I visited to, and I know the ones that really don't expect Jesus to return. I know that for a fact. I know that without any question in my mind to be able to say that adamantly, based upon not just meeting with the people, but meeting with some of the pastors and hearing their own words. You know, kind of like, well, yeah, we teach, you know, of course, the eminency of his return. That's obviously a doctrine that we hold to. But do we live like it? You know, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I've got my Harley, you know, but that's a Harley ministry. You know, I, I minister in the Harley. You know, yeah, I've got my cruciates, but that's a cruise ministry. You know, yeah, I, you know, maybe I am in debt. You know, yeah, maybe I do owe too much, and maybe I, maybe I do have a lot of things going on. But tell people to get ready to clean up their act, to tell them that their children aren't going to grow up. Nah, I can't do that. That would be like, like telling them the world's coming to an end. That would be like expecting Jesus to return. You see. Avoidance is in the world. People are avoiding the fact of his return. People have taken a false theology of occupation and become occupied with the occupation of being in the world and not in the kingdom and not of the world. I can tell you this, just looking around, you know, it's pretty easy to go on the internet and see who's of the world and in the world and participating with the world because they've got the world in their church. I mean, look at it. Come on. Who's up on stage? How many times do you hear, you know, let's stop the service and see what Jesus has to say? Oh, well, we don't do that. Yeah, I know. The one time Keith Green did, they threw him out of that church. Back east in Oklahoma. I believe it was Oklahoma. But it was a very prominent ministry. That's why Keith Green never appeared in a Calvary Chapel. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a little too radical. Move him out. But the point is this. What are you going to do? You see, you could avoid it by simply saying, well, that's them. That's not me. You could avoid the fact that the signs of the times, one of them, is avoidance and just act like you never heard this message. You see, you could pretend like you hadn't been warned or told that one of the signs of the times is avoiding the reality of getting ready. The reality of knowing the times we live in. Knowing the signs of the times. Because see, Jesus said this. You know, and he looked him right in the eye and he says, look, you know, when you look up in the sky and you see clouds, it's going to rain. He says, if you know that, how come you don't know the signs of the times? And that's the reality of where you're at. How come you don't know that Jesus is coming in this generation? How come you don't know that your children aren't going to grow up? How come you don't know that there are some things that Jesus said to do before he comes back? How come you don't know that he warned people, put it bluntly, if they were having babies when he returned, what it would be like, especially in Israel? God help us. Have we forgotten to study the parts we don't like because we're avoiding those things? Are we looking at what we want to see as opposed to what all is contained in the scriptures? Are we choosing to avoid things that make us feel, it's just uncomfortable. I don't want to sit still for that. I don't want to listen anymore. I don't want to participate in that teaching or that theology. I want to go find something else because that's too close to home. That makes me feel uncomfortable. That's not God speaking to me. That's not conviction. That's condemnation. Don't condemn me, brother. You can't judge me. <laughs> sure I can. I'd just be held accountable for it. That's all. <laughs> okay, forgive me. Ha. But I'm going to judge you. No, I'm kidding. The point is this. Try avoidance. Go ahead. Seriously, try avoidance. See if avoiding the rapture makes it go away. It won't. See if avoiding the fact that the world is getting worse makes it go away. It won't. It may look like it gets better for a little while, like maybe a few years like after the elections, but no, it won't. It won't get better. It's going to get worse. 
See if you can avoid the sunlight beating down on you on a hot summer day. See if you can avoid the clouds that build up and rain on you. See if you can avoid the wind that blows. Because that's the way Jesus put it. He made it very blunt and very clear. You don't know the signs of the times. Why not? Try avoiding it. It's what he said. It's what he meant. It's what he did. And it's what the people that followed him heard and lived by. When he warned them that not one stone would be left unturned of this great, big, magnificent temple that gold-laid and just gorgeous and wonderful, and some people might have said, oh, but all that money could have been used for the poor people, <laughs> like they do nowadays. He said, I tell you, not one stone will be left unturned. And it happened. Literally in 70 AD. You can avoid it. Or you can listen. And you can do what God said to do. Because avoidance is one of the signs of the times and you can't avoid it. So what are you going to do about it? You know, Are you going to confront the issue? Because that's what the opposite of avoidance is. The opposite of avoidance is to confront. To directly get face to face with God are you gonna I can tell you this the majority of you will not most people won't deal with God on a one-to-one -one basis they would rather have someone tell them what to do tell them where to go tell them how to be and tell them how to live and then they get to pick and choose who that person is to tell them after all isn't that part of what democracy is all about well it's the same thing in religion a lot of people that have started megachurches and become part of a megachurch do not want to be a part of a direct confrontation with God. They want to be a part of a communal exaltation of feeling with everybody else that's feeling the same way they feel. Hey, we got a group. Let's all vote on it. <laughs> let's feel good together. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the park. <laughs> let's go to the mountains. Let's go to the valley. Let's go jet skiing. Let's go camping. What about the guy that can't afford it? In the mega church. What about the guy that really would love to have gone to Bible school? What about those that really can't afford to be a part of a mega church because it costs too much? Because it's not free. You see, avoidance is also about avoiding the things we can see right around us that Jesus knows he sent you to do. What are you doing, old Christian, to prepare for Jesus' coming? Are you telling people that Jesus is coming? Are you sharing the gospel with your neighbor, your wife, your kids? Are you preparing for the time by telling them, guess what? I understand that you have you know, a dream to be in the 2060 Olympics. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. I understand that you've been spending your life and wasting it on preparing for an Olympics that you'll never see. I understand how you think that that might be the most important thing in your life. But the reality is, you'll never see it fulfilled. Because even in the Old Testament, there was a king who said, you know, I want to see God's salvation. I don't believe that's going to happen, but I want to see God's salvation. And the prophet came up to him and said, you'll see his salvation, but you won't get it. And it just so happened that they were surrounded by enemies and they were like starving, you know, and and so, you know, the king had said, you know, said that the prophet was wrong, you know, and it was a long story, but as it was, the king put on some, you know, poor man's robes, you know, and hid himself, and he wanted to go down and eat like the beggars and the thieves that had gone outside of the city of Jerusalem in order to eat, you know. And so as he went down there and the people found out that there was food outside, they trampled him to death. And the prophet's words came true. You'll see the salvation of God, but you won't eat it. And unfortunately... God used that as an object lesson, his life as a failure for us. The bottom line is, we have to deal with God face to face. You have to deal with your personal life. And those people that are in your life, one on one, face to face, mano a mano, right here, telling them at least once, Jesus is coming, and no, it's not about the end of the world. It's about the tribulation period. 
the greatest devastation that the world has ever known is going to come upon them after a three and a half year period of peace where it seems as though the world's coming to a better place when in reality it's coming to an end and evil will be manifested when those demonic beings come out of the pit and suddenly all of these ideas about symbolisms and somehow machines making God fulfill his word fall flat on their face because the reality is you'll see an angel flying through heaven and that means an angel not a satellite suddenly mankind realizes how foolish they've been to deal with the creator of the universe and try to interpret his word you will deal with God face to face there is a time God will not allow any avoidance at all and what he does is he takes the universe as it were and peels it back like a skin or a can just opens it up and mankind sees God face to face heaven is revealed where God is in his place and at that point in time man flees and crawls under the rocks like cockroaches saying God no we can't deal with that even as John said he couldn't deal with it when he went to heaven because he was a man of unclean lips avoidance is not what God would have you to do God would have you confront and then conform yourself into the image of the Son because once you realize you can't get away from it then you'll deal with it once you realize this is the end of the world then you'll deal with it once you begin to step out in that direction you'll see that God will add the increase and he'll help you to tell someone that Jesus is coming he'll help you to show someone why the birth of Israel was the most important significant event in the 20th century and why it's so important to realize you don't have a retirement account and even though you may think it's being taken away because of the economy and people are going oh no my retirement account is gone you weren't going to live for it anyways you weren't going to be here the world was going to come to an end before you ever had a chance to spend it you see the baby boomers aren't going to get through it they aren't going to get out of it they're going to deal with God face to face and so the generation after that will march into the Valley of Megiddo and deal with God face to face. What do you want to do? Do you want to keep playing the games and be part of the fulfillment like that king who got trampled to death, who saw the salvation of God but didn't get to participate in it? Do you want to be a fulfillment of the prophecies that yes, it was the end of the world, but you didn't get to participate in it? because you got trampled because you were avoiding the fact that you knew that Jesus was coming? What are you going to do about it? I already told you what I did. I already told you what I said. I told you about my sister. Well, I'm telling you about what I do now. I tell people and ask them, even as I'm going this Thanksgiving to my family, you know, and there's other members of the family there that you know, they're pretty carnal, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna say, Hey look, what do you think about the end of the world? You know, what do you think about Jesus? Is Jesus coming to you? I don't want to talk about it. Well, okay, but I gotta ask you, what do you think? Do you think it's gonna happen? Yes or no? If they say no, I'll say, God help you. Sorry. I feel sorry for you. And I may turn my back on them and walk away. Because I've already shared with them before, you know, and I may have to say, hey, you know, God help you, but you know, I'll pray for you, but that's it. I think you've got your last warning. Sadly. And there's some people that will be upset. And there's some people that might even get mad. I might even have a family member, for all I know, throw me out of their house. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Maybe they'll get in my face. And then face to face, we'll have a confrontation. I'll listen to all their venting. And I'll smile and they'll think I'm self-righteous or whatever and I'll just kind of go thinking in my head you know avoidance is one of those things I was teaching you know and I already think I made a tape on this you know I said I wonder if I can use this in some way to share with someone else how whether you avoid it or not it's still gonna happen and you'll see a video come out from it <laughs> but for you what are you gonna do Christian 
What are you going to do about Jesus when he says to you, enter in? Or he says, depart from me, I never knew you. Did you get ready? Did you prepare? Or did you avoid and become just another one of the signs of the times?